Oke, okay. hello everybody. Selamat datang di Digital Tech Talk Over Coffee. Ini adalah kolaborasi harmonis antara ITEL atau Indonesia Technology Enhanced Language Learning dengan British Council Indonesia. Ini adalah seri yang pertama dan kita ada 900 pendaftar. Jadi silahkan boleh ketik chat datang dari mana dan uh, siapa nama Anda. And also hello to anyone coming from uh, other country, country outside Indonesia. You can also type where you are from here. So this is the first webinar series. We are going to have eight webinar series from today, 13 of April up to 25th of April. First of all, perkenalkan nama saya Vinita, saya Director of Teachers Professional Development from ITEL. Dan saya ingin cerita sedikit tentang ITEL. Mungkin sebagian dari teman-teman ada yang sudah tahu bahwa ITEL uh, adalah asosiasi yang bergerak di bidang pendidikan dan teknologi, khususnya pendidikan dan pengajaran bahasa. Uh, later on, probably uh, Colm will talk more about British Council. Saya cerita sedikit webinar ini sebetulnya awalnya Uh, just a small step, langkah awal dari kami teman-teman ITEL yang ingin berbagi cerita pada teman-teman tentang pengajaran menggunakan teknologi, tapi ternyata peminatnya banyak sekali, sampai ratusan. And we are so lucky that British Council would like to collaborate with us so that uh, this webinar can happen and cater all the participants. Almost a hundred, a thousand participants for this webinar. And today we're going to have a very interesting topic on exploring and integrating digital technology and learning materials. But before we start, I would like to hand over uh, this to Pak Kom, the Director of English Education and Society from British Council Indonesia. You may start to kick off this webinar, Pak. The microphone is yours. Okay, and thank you very much, Fanita and welcome everybody to this first webinar. Uh, I hope you're all comfortable at home, keeping safe. Um, so all of us are at home uh, across Indonesia. I myself am in Jakarta and it's just started raining outside. So I hope you don't hear too much of the rain through this webinar. And also welcome to everybody from around the world. And I know there are some people from the UK that have joined us too. Um, we're really excited to have this, this webinar. It is uh, the first of a series that we're going to be running with the British Council in partnership with ITEL. And uh, we're, we're delighted to be, to be doing that. I want to say a few words really um, before we get started. First of all, I think in these difficult, challenging times as English teachers, it's really important for us to stay connected and have a sort of a community. And I think your first community are those teachers that you know, the other teachers from your schools that I'm sure you're messaging, that you're keeping in touch with. I'm keeping in touch with my team, even though we're all at home. And so as we have to embrace this situation that we're in and overcome the challenges, it's important to rely on each other. Um, and today, this is for those of you that don't know, we're kind of welcoming you to two other communities. So ITEL is a community of Indonesian experts in English teaching and specifically in digital, um, the use of digital technology to teach English. And of course, I am the Director of English and Education and Society of the British Council. And I welcome you all to our global community of English practitioners, English teachers, English experts. Um, and later today, at the end of this webinar, I'm going to share with you some of the uh, free resources for parents, for teachers, for students, for teenagers, um, things that people can access online uh, in order to continue their English language developments whilst they can't go to school. The second thing I just briefly wanted to say about today is you're very, very lucky in that we have the incredible experts from Joe Dale from the UK and Pak Jati from Bandung, who are going to be sharing with you uh, very innovative ways to use technology. 
And I know that some of you who registered are quite experienced in using technology, but I hope you'll learn a few new techniques, uh, applications or webinars or, or methods or ways of doing things. But also I know that there will be many of you where the using technology to teach online is something quite new. Uh, you might never have done it before. Um, so I don't want you to be overwhelmed. Everybody is at a different place in their learning and development. I myself, am, I'm definitely not an expert compared to Joe and to, to Pat Jatty. Um, so even if you're a complete beginner, I hope through today's webinar, you will see how, you know, the potential for how technology can be used. But also I'll be talking specifically about some resources for you to help you get started, uh, to help you on that journey. So don't worry if, if you've never done it before. And uh, if you're already an expert, I hope you learn something new. Um, lastly, obviously, this is a, a webinar that is online. We're all together. So this is synchronous learning. We're all in the same place. We'll also be talking a lot about asynchronous, uh, things that your, you and your, your students can do in their own time. So for example, when you registered for this webinar, you all did that at different times, but now we're all here together. And after this webinar, you'll go away and you'll maybe look into some of these resources and, and develop in your own time. So again, we'll be talking a lot about synchronous and asynchronous uh, tools for language learning. So that's all from me. Delighted that you've joined us. Um, I'll see you later in the webinar. Get a drink, uh, get a coffee, uh, maybe get your phone, uh, open another window in your laptop because I know it's going to be interactive. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy it. We will share the slides and the recording later. But for now, from me, thank you very much. And I'm going to hand back to Fanita. Thanks, Fanita. Thank you, Calm. Uh, so I consider that this webinar is opened. Okay, before we start, I'd like to remind you that this uh, webinar is recorded later. The recording version will be uploaded in uh, YouTube channels. And also uh, on down there on your tools, you can see chat box and uh, chat button and Q&A button. Uh, you can use the chat button to introduce yourself or uh, greeting, greet uh, other participants. While if you have any questions, you can uh, during the presentation, you can post it in the Q&A button. All right then, so today we have three presenters. The first one will be Joe Dale, the great Joe Dale from UK. Um, I think I will pass, uh, pass this to Joe just to give a brief introduction about yourself um, and a brief summary of what you are going to talk about today. Hand it to you, Joe. Okay, lovely. Thanks ever so much, uh, Fanita. So uh, my name is Joe Dale. Um, I took part in the ITEL conference um, from my, the, the same room again um, on the Isle of Wight um, uh, recently. So it's lovely to have the opportunity to, to come back and to speak to, we have 558 people in the room right now, which I think is the most I've ever spoken to in a webinar before. So it's an absolute pleasure to be here. Um, so a little bit of background about myself. I used to be um, a French teacher for 13 years, teaching at secondary school level, as well as at... Um, middle school level um, on the Isle of Wight, uh, where I taught uh, there for 10 years and then three years at secondary uh, school level before then. And for the last 10 years, I've been an independent languages consultant. I, I go all around the world running training on, uh, on the use of technology to enhance language learning in particular. And I met Colm through the ITEFL conference, which I've uh, attended every year since 2013. And um, shall I start my presentation? Is that okay? And if I share my screen now, um, I'm going to go through a presentation with you now for the next um, 25 minutes or so, and then we'll have a few questions at the end. If you have um, a burning question, please put it in the chat, and then we'll come to it um, in a moment. Sorry, at, at the end of the presentation. So I'm hoping everyone can see the screen. Can uh, Fanita, can you confirm you can see my screen? Yes, I can see your screen. Fantastic. Okay, lovely. Okay, brilliant. So um, those are my contact details. I'm Joe Dale on Twitter, and my email address is joedale at talk21.com. If you have any questions that you'd like to ask me about anything to do with this presentation or anything around technology and languages, then please just ask me. That's absolutely fine. Um, uh, yeah, so let's, uh, let's um, kick off. Let's go for it. So I've called this online teaching where to start. I think what Colm said earlier about everyone is going to have different level, levels of techno savviness is an incredibly important point. And the point, the, 
the idea of this presentation is not to overwhelm people or scare people it's to support people and you'll get the presentation at the end as well which you can then then have a look at and i'm going to be setting you lots and lots and lots and lots of homework so the first thing i wanted to uh, let's Right, the first thing I wanted to do, yeah, there we are, is we're going to run a Mentimeter. Now, probably a lot of you know Mentimeter already. But what I would like you to do, please, I'll give you the code in a second, is can you please all go to menti.com and put in the code 432557. So the idea of this part of the session is simply to see how you're all feeling at the moment about remote teaching. It's going to be a big challenge for everybody. Um, because uh, some of you uh, may have never done any of this sort of thing before um, using remote teaching. You won't know where to start. And the idea of this presentation is to give you lots and lots of quick and easy um, starting points, which will help you to structure your uh, learning. So exactly. So the first uh, message we've got up is challenging. I'm sure it is challenging for everyone. Let's keep them coming. You can have lots and lots of uh, different um, responses here. Uh, unmotivated oh wow <laughs> so if you're not if you're not really motivated oh dear well hopefully this this presentation will uh, will uh, motivate you and I would suggest reaching out to your colleagues and asking for help more people have written challenging excited okay not sure at all yes a lot of uh, worry I'm sure out there um, it will take time to prepare nervous and excited in same measures can you see how this is all changing in real time this is fantastic challenge um, overwhelmed overwhelmed okay confused with five d's is that uh okay love it challenging okay so we've got a range of responses there that's really interesting uh some of whom are very excited about the prospects and some people seemingly are very worried um but you'll you'll get there the most important thing is that you do what you can do you, you try your best um nobody is expecting perfection in this situation particularly if you're very new to remote teaching so um I can see there's a wow 110 participants so far. I'll just let that um, refresh for a little bit longer. I've made this unlimited, so you can actually post as many times as you want to, which is fine. Uh, this is a really nice way of uh, uh, maybe having like an exit ticket at the end of the lesson. So in other words, the students can uh, show what they've learned in the lesson by leaving something before they're allowed to leave the classroom. Or you could use it as a um, starter activity as well. Uh, you could give them a... Um, Ask them, for example, to say what they did last weekend uh, using the perfect tense, for example, and they're all posting there, right? Because I've, I've got lots and lots of time here. Um, I think people have got a, uh, a good idea of how this is looking. I'm just going to click on the, oh, I'm just going to click on the cog and click change layout and turn this into a word cloud. Let's see, <laughs> let's see how that changed. Can you see? So the biggest word is the word that's, that's, that's absolutely fantastic. Someone should take a screenshot of that. Um, so, um, the, the, so just to be very clear with the word cloud option the biggest word is the, is the word which has been used the most and as you can see everybody 500 and so people in the room the biggest word is challenging which i think speaks absolute volumes so thank you ever so much for everybody and um, i'm going to go back to my presentation which is here that was awesome right so we've got a really good idea now of where people how people are feeling about remote teaching and the vast majority of you are feeling that it's very challenging, which is completely unsurprising. So that's really great. OK, let's uh, let's carry on. Right. So with that in mind, I'm sure a lot of you maybe have had a change of mindset about the use of technology. Maybe some people who are feeling very confident about the use of technology before the lockdown are, are feeling, oh, yeah, I'll be able to do this. I'll be able to do that. I'll be able to try out these things that I haven't had time to explore yet. Whereas some of you, as you've shown already, are feeling very challenged now. Um, I'm a member of the MFL Twitterati, which is MFL T W I T T E R A T I, MFL Twitterati. And this is a group of language teachers, consultants, and, and associations in the UK and, and in Ireland. But the hashtag is used by people all over the world. And um, this was a, um, a teacher, Francisco, who posted uh, this tweet the other day. And I thought it was particularly useful in relation to mindset. Now, you can see that Adam has replied. Uh, then Vincent has uh, piped in and then we've got Prof MFL at the bottom and essentially as you can see what Francisco is asking here hopefully you can all read that okay it's big enough but you can see you know uh, would we see a boom in the use of technology in education after lockdown would schools use it as a tool to close the gap for example online intervention sessions recorded catch-up lessons etc so that's a really really good question and that could be one of the in my opinion positive things about uh, the lockdown that afterwards 
um, maybe teachers will have a change in mindset. And, and as you can see, Adam here, he's saying, you know, it's definitely something I will not be scared to use in the future. But at the same time, he loves being face to face with his class, which is completely understandable. I've seen some very heartrending tweets from teachers saying, I'm really missing my kids. I'm, I'm missing the, you know, the, 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 this, the, the discussion, the chat, the moans, the groans, all the rest of it, you know, teenagers being teenagers. And that's really lovely to, 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 to see that. But at the same time, you feel sorry for those teachers that are really missing the classroom. Um, Vincent uh, points um, out, you know, the, the danger of technology making the gap worse. Um, you know, digital divide, particularly in um, environments where the, the, the there's not a lot of technology. The, maybe the internet is not uh, particularly strong, or students don't have access to devices, etc. So I think that's really, really interesting, and that's um, hopefully that's made you all think about maybe after this, when this is all over, how it will change your mindset as well. Okay. Right. So one of the one of the main reasons I think I've been asked to appear <laughs> on this webinar is because of this document. Now, this document I started about three weeks ago. Um, I'm just going to show it to you live, but uh, it's it's now about 28 pages. I think it is. Um, it started off about 18 pages. And essentially what I did was I decided to collect together lots and lots of different links all around the use of technology for aimed at language teachers in response to the coronavirus. So what I've done, because there were so many pages, I put in these different um, sections, getting started, world language teachers share tips on remote learning, video conferencing tools, screencasting tools, and what have you. And I'm just gonna give you a quick flavor. So the, this getting started document, uh, that part I mean, this is all sort of like um, ideas on setting up uh, online teaching, advice from head teachers, uh, some tools that you can use, which um, will give you structure. So there's lots and lots of links there. And then we go on to the world language teachers uh, links. So different presentations that teachers have shared, different resources they've made available, some video conferencing tools. We're using Zoom right now. So advice around Zoom, particularly security. Um, we're gonna look at this one in a minute, that, that picture there. Um, Google Classroom, Google Meet, how to manage your classroom that way, using video conferencing, Microsoft Teams, if you're in an Office 365 um, situation. Uh, and this is all available. I've given you the link a moment ago. Then we've got um, things like Loom and Screencast-O-Matic, which I'll talk more about in a moment. Flipgrid, which is good for asynchronous speaking practice, as well as lots and lots of other ideas. So that's just giving you a little flavor of all the information that's there. Um, I've been taking part in quite a few webinars as well, and the webinars are towards the bottom as well. But there's masses and masses and masses of things to look at there. So I'm just going to go back to my presentation. But the link to that is, as you can see, is is.gd forward slash tilt thurs Joe Dale. Now, the reason it's tilt TILT stands for Technology and Language Teaching. And um, there was a face-to-face -face conference that was supposed to happen in April uh, called the TILT Conference in the UK. And because it was canceled for obvious reasons because of the lockdown, uh, myself and my friend Helen Myers, who uh, uh, re uh, works for the, or represents the Association for Language Learning, which is uh, it's similar to ITEL, uh, but it's the Language Association in the UK. And um, we decided that um, because the conference was being canceled, that we would just do lots and lots of webinars to support teachers in this very challenging time um, on the use of uh, technology. So I did the first one and the recording is available on that uh, document at the top. And we've had lots of other teachers taking part as well. So there we are. So, um, so with that in mind, this is the, the webinar list. If you go to the link here, you see I've got, I've got links at the bottom of each presentation, uh, sorry, each uh, slide. So you can see here, the forthcoming ones, um, we've got today, uh, eight till nine o'clock uh, BST, we've got Jane Bassnett, who's talking about Microsoft Teams. That's her follow-up session. And um, she, uh, yeah, she did a fantastic walkthrough of Microsoft Teams on Thursday last week. And she's got like a sort of a, a clinic situation whereby she'll be um, um, trying to answer as many questions as possible. Uh, then tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock um, BST, we have Jan Chama talking about class kick, which might be new to a lot of you, uh, which is like a learning management uh, tool, particularly good for feedback and really nice uh, for use in the classroom. And you can see all these other people that we've got lined up. All of these are completely free. Uh, and uh, we've been getting um, not as many as 500 or so people in the room, but um, up to uh, uh, around 100 people for some of them, which is just wonderful. So um, if you want to check them out, you can, uh, you can come along. Um, and you're more than welcome. And then at the bottom of this, um, this link here, I've got my YouTube channel and all the recordings of all the webinars are all stored on my YouTube channel, which is just Joe Dale 100. If you search for Joe Dale 100, you'll find it. 
I'm not checking all the chat, so I'm, I'm, if there are any good questions, we can do those um, um, at the end. Okay, right. Now, there have been lots of people who uh, have been uh, concerned or worried about safeguarding uh, students for obvious reasons around the use of video conferencing. If you're using Zoom or um, Google Meet or um, uh, uh, Microsoft Teams, the, uh, the Meet in Microsoft Teams. And so I came across this article, which was written by a former teacher, former assistant head teacher, um, Ross Morrison McGill, known as Teacher Toolkit Online. He has um, uh, over 300,000 followers on Twitter. So I think he's the most followed teacher on Twitter. That's what he says in the UK. Um, I'll just click on the link here, just to give you a flavor of, the, um, of what the blog post is all about. Uh, what he's done is he's collected together uh, different resources from Zoom, uh, which is this, this is being particularly uh, focusing on, but a lot of the advice is appropriate for anyone looking at um, uh, uh, using uh, video conferencing uh, to have live lessons. Uh, Colm was talking about synchronous as opposed to asynchronous teaching. So um, that should be a very useful uh, document or blog post that you can then send to your principal or head teacher to have a look at in relation to the use of Zoom. Um, I think um, also Zoom have added some new features I'll talk about in a moment as well. For example, um, having uh, a waiting room turned on by default, you would have seen that you, were, you joined via a waiting room. Um, and to have things like being able to mute people quickly and easily, stopping them sharing their screen, um, that sort of thing to, to keep people as safe as possible. Um, all of these tools, I think, have some element of, uh, of risk. But of course, when you're talking about safeguarding children, it's incredibly important to uh, follow the guidelines and there are lots of schools who aren't allowing video conferencing um, for that reason so that teachers can't look into um, uh, uh, students houses and vice versa um, to try and keep everyone as safe as possible other schools are embracing it and uh, and are doing live lessons okay right let's uh, let's carry on right now in relation to security um, I'm sure a lot of you know Russell Stannard if you don't know Russell Stannard he's an amazing educator um, uh, English teacher as well his um, his website is teachertrainingvideos.com and he's done a whole set of different videos all around zoom uh, particularly one around zoom security for educators and I would say I've watched quite a few of these videos around security and I would say that is easily the best one hands down so I would really encourage you to um, go to his website uh, they're all on YouTube as well, but you can see here uh, you've got the Zoom for uh, Zoom security for educators. If you were to click on that one, that would um, that's about 18 minutes long, I think it is, and it's well worth watching. And this was prior to Zoom announcing new features within the interface, which I'll talk about more in a second. But I think that's a really really nice uh, set of tutorials, not only around the use of security, but also um, the focus on uh, t a teacher centered approach because it could be easy to have a very, um, sorry, student-centered approach. It could be easy to have a very teacher-centered approach when we're using Zoom or other video conferencing tools, or when you're, when you're creating a task in, say, a Google Doc, and then you ask the students to, to complete it. It could be very sort of teacher-centered, but actually um, what Russell does very well, he's got a couple of videos uh, looking at how you can make the approach more student-centered, which I think is an incredibly important point. Otherwise, it could be a bit dry and it could be difficult for the students to keep motivation, I think. So, there's a big plug for Russell. Now, in relation to what, what I've just said, literally in the last couple of days, Zoom have updated their software. If you haven't got the latest version, I would encourage you to update. So you can see now there's a, secu a security button. So you can, for example, lock the meeting. So you, it means that uh, nobody can then enter the meeting once it's um, started, so you can lock it. You can enable a waiting room, um, which is done by default anyway. You can choose whether participants can share their screen or not, which is an incredibly powerful thing. Otherwise, you'd have to go to the settings on the web-based uh, in the browser to do that. You can turn off chat. You can turn off um, students renaming themselves. Uh, you, the invite button now is in a slightly different place on the right-hand side of the screen. As you can see, you can uh, choose whether you allow participants to unmute themselves or rename themselves. Uh, and what have you. So that's really, really handy, I think, that Zoom have introduced those features and therefore it makes it a more suitable environment for use in the class because, of course, I've said this on other webinars, all these tools we're talking about, Microsoft, well, not, not so much with Microsoft Teams, but, but certainly with Zoom um, and Google Meet, they're not designed uh, with education in mind. But having said that, in the last couple of weeks, both Zoom and Meet and Microsoft Teams, Microsoft Teams have introduced um, the close the room for, for everybody, like a forced uh, shutdown. 
which um, which wasn't available before. So if a teacher were to leave the room, the students could carry on. Or if the teacher didn't close the room, the teacher the, the students could go back to the room later. Whereas that's not possible now. Now that you've got this forced lock, which is what teachers were asking for. So that's really good that the companies are responding um, so quickly to uh, to this. And uh, yeah, there we are. Yeah. So that that tweet there, as you can see, this was um, a tweet I sent on April the 9th about being pleased that they've updated their um, their interface. So let's go back to here. Okay, so this was a, um, a, 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 a picture which I came across on a Facebook group, which I'm part of, and um, I tweeted about it and people, uh, uh, it was retweeted a lot. So what this is, what's happening in this picture is it allows you to uh, use a second device as a document camera, which I think is very clever. The most important thing if you do this is that you mute your audio on the first device. Um, so what you do essentially, you, you just log in with the same account to uh, to the Zoom session that you're running. You then either hold your, your device. Uh, I've got my iPad here right now. You'd hold your device, or you'd put it on. Uh, you'd, you'd prop it up somewhere between a couple of tins or on some books or what have you, pointing the back facing camera downwards because that will be the best quality one compared to the front front facing camera. And then you point it at whatever you want to write on a piece of paper, and then you can then do a, a grammar explanation or what have you, or give, give some students some feedback by writing on the piece of paper with your pen. So old school meeting um, new technology. So I think that's absolutely fascinating. I've tried it and it does work, um, but mute the audio on your first device, otherwise you'll get a feedback, okay? There we are. Right, Wakelet. So um, I don't know how many people have heard of Wakelet, but it's one of my uh, favorite tools at the moment for collecting links. So if you come across interesting resources, why not uh, start a Wakelet, which is similar to sort of Flipboard or Pinterest. Um, it allows you to make what they call a collection. You can then store all the links um, around a certain theme in a certain collection, and you can share that whole collection as one link. So this could be good for your own professional development, as well as um, uh, creating independent activities for students. And there's also a, co a contributors um, option as well with a Wakelet, so you could give the code to the students. They don't need to have an account to um, use the code, and then you could be building a Wakelet collection together um, collaboratively. So just to give you an idea of one, here's a link to um, a Wakelet which um, a, a, an educator up in Aberdeenshire in the north of Scotland has put together, all around remote learning. So she's come across lots of interesting links and articles and she just saved them all in the, in the same place on Wakelet. And the great thing about Wakelet is there are, there's a Chrome extension, there's some um, iOS and Android apps. So whatever device you're on, it can, everything can be saved in the same place automatically, which is just fabulous. Okay, let's um, go here. I've also put together one myself around educational podcasts, um, which again could be useful in a low tech environment because you can download the podcast beforehand and then do listening comprehensions based on that. It doesn't require a, um, a, uh, a particularly fast internet connection. So that's some podcasts for you. Let's carry on. Uh, this one I'd like to try live if that's okay. So this is called whiteboard.fe. I'm sure this is new to a lot of you. I'm just gonna click new class and put my name in like that and click create new class. Right, can you all go to whiteboard.fe forward slash G27? I'm gonna do this right now on my, on my iPad and then we'll, I'll show you how it works. So G27, there we are. And it says enter your name. So I'm gonna write Joe and then it says join whiteboard class like that. And then I'd like you to tell me how you're feeling about remote teaching. So I'm gonna do a lovely heart because I'm loving it. And that should now, can you see? It's appeared here on the screen. So I'll just give you a moment to do, do your drawings, if that's okay. And I'm then gonna mention that um, there isn't a default option for printing off the, uh, all the results, but I'm gonna show you a little trick in a moment once some, of, some more of you have drawn a picture. I have no idea if there's a limit to how many people you can have in a room at the same time. So it might be a bit challenging <laughs> to do this, but let's see how it goes. I'll just give you another minute or so, just draw a picture. That'd be great. So in, in a class of say 30, you could uh, use this as a replacement to, for um, a mini whiteboard. So you can only see your own picture, whereas I can see all the pictures all together. Yeah, I can see that it's, it's being a bit demanding because <laughs> there's so many people trying to draw. 
But in a real classroom situation, uh, in, as in, in, in a remote teaching context, you could give some instructions for the students and then they could all draw their little picture. Everything um, is deleted after two hours, I think it is, and you can close the room at any time by clicking on the cog top right. That's great. I think we'll carry on just because I haven't got lots of time. Now the trick now is if you, I'm in Chrome now, if I click the three dots top right, can you see it says print? Now I've got a piece of software installed on my um, computer called Qt PDF, Qt PDF, C-U-T-E PDF. So if I click on that now, this will come up. You see it says Qt PDF Writer. I can click print and what that will do, ah, Okay, I tried this, it's saying print failed, but I think because, it's probably because there's so many people accessing this, but when I tried this this morning, it worked absolutely fine. So it allowed me to print the picture that I had done as a PDF. So then you've got the evidence of the work that you've, um, that you've all done. Thank you ever so much, everyone. I'm gonna carry on now, if that's okay. Right, so that's uh, whiteboard.fi, very useful for promoting speaking and for showing understanding. Screencasting, talked a little bit about screencasting already. I wrote an article, which is here, around screencasting in languages. So asynchronous um, uh, videos, you could, um, if you don't know what a screencast is, you could just record the screen, which could be your PowerPoint, or it could be um, a Google Doc, or it could be a website, and you record your answer, you record your a voiceover over the top. Uh, there's lots of links there on how to get started. People have seem, seemingly liked that, uh, that article. Um, the most, uh, obvious screencasting tools, which are all free and work in similar ways, uh, are Loom, which is the icon here, Screencastify and Screencastomatic. My personal favorite is Loom. And here's an article by the TS, four reasons pre-recorded lessons are your best option. So if you're not allowed to do video conferencing live, why not um, look at uh, the option of doing a screencast instead? Okay, again, this is a teacher here. I'm just gonna show you this live talking about using Loom. This is uh, Ms. Egan from um, Ireland. Uh, as you can see here, she's saying, cannot re recommend this tool enough. So she's obviously really enjoying being able to record her screen, sending the link automatically to the students in Google Classroom or whatever you're using, Microsoft Teams, and um, she's good to go. Right, let's go back here. Here's a similar one from Rachel. She's talking about using Loom. Uh, from Ms. Grice, I'm saying, I mean, Rachel is saying, how does this compare to screencast I've been using that one so far. Ms. Grice says, can't compare because I've only used Loom, but it's so simple, the kids really like uh, me to do it. Only downside is it can take a little while to trim or edit your videos, but I really rate it overall. So there's some, some feedback from real teachers talking about using these tools, which I'm referring to. Okay, Flipgrid. Now I know that um, Sheila and Grace are gonna be talking about Flipgrid later on this week. But um, you may not know that screen recording is now part of Flipgrid, and I've tried it out and it works really nicely. So you could, could, could get all the students to screen share their own screens uh, for sort of speaking practice around a picture or a website, whatever, what, what have you. And it all saves privately within Flipgrid. This is a school in the UAE talking about um, uh, how they like using Flipgrid. We may not be face to face, but Zoom, Flipgrid and Hangouts are the be next best things, which I think is just lovely. Um, there's also a new Chrome extension now um, from Flipgrid, which allows you to record in your browser as well, which is available on Chrome and Microsoft Edge. So that's something else. And the links are all there to find out more. Uh, Quizlet Live has proved a popular uh, tool for remote teaching. Uh, you don't have to show the sliders on the screen. You can just give them the code um, and they can all have a go together. Some schools are having sort of competitions at certain times doing it live. You can see here there's a school, Rainford High in the UK, that's saying year eight Quizlet Live at 11 o'clock today. And then they're passing the code through here. You can see on the right hand side, this is a teacher from that school. Keep your eyes peeled for the next game on Google Classroom or show my homework. So that's a really nice way as well. Sharing the code with the students, they all play together and away you go. Right. Uh, Google Forms, Edpuzzle and Quizzes. Um, I'm sure probably a lot of you have heard of these ones, but maybe you don't know that you can record audio within quizzes now as well. Um, so you can make sort of listening comprehension questions. Here's um, a little uh, conversation that I had with, um, hang on, with, uh, here we are, with uh, a teacher. Here we are. Um, so I asked the question, uh, here we are. I asked the question, could you let me know if you're using quizzes, Gimkit, Quizlet Live, et cetera, um, to the MFL Twitterati. 
And then Andres got in touch with me. He's in Malaysia and he was talking about using Google Forms, using quizzes. Uh, he's also been experimenting with um, the new audio feature in quizzes and doing listening comprehensions. And um, I've also then put together a Google Form asking people to go through how to, how to do this in a remote teaching context, face to face, sorry, um, step by step. So again, I'm trying to crowdsource from the community on how, to, uh, how we can all help each other in this uh, very challenging time. Um, have we got time for Shalala? I appreciate I may be going over a little bit. Yeah, is that okay? Okay, I'm gonna show you Shalala quickly. Shalala is similar to whiteboard.fi. Uh, probably for a lot of you, you've not seen this one before. I know I, I presented this in the last um, session. I'll just log in quickly. Uh, hang on, if I sign in with Google. There we are. I just sign in with Google quickly. There we are. Right. Uh, oh, okay. Hang on. Just give me a second. I must. I thought I had a Google. Hang on. Just two seconds. Here we are. Right. Right. Okay. So I'm going to click on draw room like that and click on start draw room. Like this and click uh, conversational and start. And, uh, can you all go to shalala.com slash draw and then put in the uh, put in the code for this place. Sorry about that. I, I made the mistake of leaving the music on. I'm sorry about that. But that would have given you a flavor of how that works. But the difference between this compared to whiteboard.fi, look at all that. Amazing. Um, is so, you can now, can I, you think, see? I think we can have another go. We've got time because I don't need. Okay, let's do it again. Okay, we'll do it again. Without sorry. the sound and then people can hear yeah. your instructions. Okay? No worries. Okay, no problem. Let's do that again. Hang on. Let's go back. Hang on, what's it doing? Let me go back to the beginning. Oop. Right, so 
there we are. Right. So we'll do it again. Sorry about that. Right. So start drawing. <laughs> That's the great thing about doing things live, isn't it? Right. So you click conversational, you click, right. Can you see that it says music? You turn off the music, always turn off the music. Right. <laughs> then you click start. <laughs> oh dear. Right. So it's a new code. So you have to go back to, um, uh, shalala.com forward slash draw press return put in the new room code so x y 6 m r there we are put your name in again tap join room start drawing okay so i will wait for a moment i'll then click start again i'd love you to draw a picture telling me how you're feeling <laughs> and then i'll show you how uh about remote teaching and then i will then show you how to download the results as a pdf wow look how many students are in the room you're amazing okay should we let's go for it i think thanks ever so much for everyone that's um put, well hundreds okay i'll wait another five seconds <laughs> amazing i've never had so many people um in the same room at the same time before i don't think should we go for it let's go for it i'm just gonna go for it right so now I'd love for you to draw a picture to tell me how you're feeling about remote teaching, having watched this presentation. So I'm going to tap on the heart. You do different colors as well. If you want to you tap submit, you tap submit again, and that will now start to appear on the screen. Lovely. So I can now, if there's ones I particularly like, I can uh, add you to the masterpiece board. I can delete anything if I feel that it's inappropriate. Oh, that's a nice one. I'm going to click on the, uh, that one. There we are. So that lovely heart has now appeared. So I just give you a moment to uh, <laughs> to then uh, put your answers on. So as you can see, similar to um, whiteboard.fi, this one's been around a little bit longer. Um, if you want to create your own account, um, you need to use the following link, which is on the presentation as well, shalala.com forward slash Joe, J-O-E, shalala.com forward slash J-O-E, and that will allow you to create an account. So that's really fantastic. I think everyone has... Uh, or lots of people have drawn their answers. That's superb. I think I'm going to go to the top now and click end drawing if that's okay. That's interesting. It's, it's asking me to go to the bottom all the time because everyone, there's so many people. Okay, I'll just wait for a moment actually for you to draw. Literally, the browser not letting me go up to the top because there were so many new contributions all the time, which is hilarious. I do apologize for going over a bit, but hopefully you think this is worth it. This is amazing. This is making my, uh, my day. Okay, if you could stop drawing now, I'll then go up to the top. Oh, stop drawing now. Hang on. <laughs> Let me refresh the page. No, I won't refresh the page. Let's go up to the top. Right. So, oh, there's all these new contributions. I've never done this with so many people before. I think that's why. Normally, you would click uh, end, end. Look, can you say, oh. Okay, stop drawing now, and I'll go to the top. All right. And, oh. Let me refresh the page, see if that takes me to the top. I think you get the idea. And, yeah, okay. I think you get the idea. You basically, you, you click stop drawing. Um, you can then click on the PDF of the masterpieces and download everything as a PDF. And that's it. I think that's probably giving you, a, I think it's, it's not going to let me do this. Let me just try one more time. There's not, there's never a problem normally. It's just the fact there's so many people in the room. Yeah. You can all see it says, anyway, it, it, hopefully that's okay with everyone. Everyone's got a, fa a feel for how that works. I'll just um, go here. Yeah, there we are. And then just to finish off with, this is a presentation which um, I also really rate around um, the use of technology for uh, language teachers. This is created by French and Spanish teachers, but the link is here. And it just gives you a really nice, uh, it's a two hour uh, webinar and the recording is underneath as well in the link. So this is from uh, Cathy Nusselin, Heidi Trude and Nathan Lutz who are here. And they gave some really good advice, for example, on uh, use of uh, technology uh, Wi-Fi, who's sharing the device and this sort of thing. And it goes through some of the tools which I've mentioned already. So I would really encourage you to watch that. It's two hours long, but it'll give you lots of other ideas around use of technology uh, to support remote uh, teaching, uh, lang remote language teaching in particular. So there we are. Thank you so much for being such a lovely audience. There, This is my presentation. So it's the short form again of is.gd forward slash ITEL online workshop. You can scan the QR code as well. You'll see that on the link uh, there at the bottom, it says mflTwitterartypodcast.com. So I, I run a, a podcast with my uh, friend uh, Noah Geisel from Denver, Colorado. The last episode was November. We, we're um, going to be starting up again soon, but um, 
what with the lockdown and everything, we've been a little bit busy, both of us. But um, that's um, aimed at language teachers as well, and lots of voices from the MFL Twitterati that you can check out. And I think that was everything I wanted to say. If you want to contact me about anything to do with this presentation or anything around technology languages, I'm more than happy for you to, to contact me via email or via Twitter. And again, a, 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 a genuine thank you to the British Council and to ITEL for giving me this opportunity. I really appreciate it. And I hope you found this presentation useful. And um, that's me. Thanks ever so much. And I'll be here for the rest of the webinar as well. Okay. Thank you, Joe. That was a fantastic presentation. We got a lot of resources. And guess you give a lot of homework to all the participants <laughs> to explore. Of course. Technology tools that you provide uh, to us. Uh, there are some questions here. Are you happy to see like uh, answering the question yourself? Of course. Or do you want of course. To some? All right. That's fine. Shall I stop sharing the screen? Or shall I? Uh, yeah, okay. Hey, okay, that's okay. I, I think you can uh, keep it on. Okay. Yeah. Any, yeah. If we do a couple of questions, that'd be absolutely fantastic. Uh huh. Uh, can you can you access uh, the Q and A uh, button, or do you want me yes, to I read can. the? Yes, I can. Yeah, I can. Yeah. All Which right. one would you okay. like me Maybe to do? Okay. Maybe you can you... see like. Okay. Um, right. Okay. Let's. Right. So it says Zoom is pretty expensive for most students. Is there any mm -hmm. cheaper, but better application? So Zoom is free for up to 40 minutes with uh, multiple users. And in lots of countries around the world, um, it's possible to apply for an educator account and get it uh, unlimited. Uh, I'm not sure if that's the case in Indonesia, but um, uh, so it's, it's free for up to 40 minutes and then you can just create another session after that. So um, from that point of view, uh, and it's completely it's free for uh, for students and they don't need an account to log in as well, which is very nice. Um, okay. Someone also asked about the uh, security of Zoom because uh, yeah, we heard that Zoom is not oh. really secure. Can you explain a bit about that? Of course. So that's why I use the um, the article there by Ross um, uh, Morrison McGill because that pulls together all the advice that he's found and, um, and then with the Russell Standard security videos, as well that's the information that i found i mean how safe is any any video conferencing tool i think from the point of view of uh, making sure that you've always got a waiting room which is turned on by default now and knowing the keyboard shortcuts or how to remove people or mute people or um stop screen sharing that's the most important thing uh, from that, that you can do as educators in relation to if they're you know taking your data and sending it to facebook that they were accused of which they've said they've stopped doing now and and they're, 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 you know they're analyzing your computer i'm sure that's that's true of any video conferencing uh, service that it will have to know the sort of computer that you're using and your ip address that doesn't mean that they're being nefarious about that and then they're taking that information now i'm not i don't work for zoom i'm completely independent but I think we have to have a common sense approach to this. And, um, you know, and if you're unhappy about using a video conferencing tool, then I've given you lots of suggestions on how you can use asynchronous means through screencasting and some of these um, interactive activities that you could do. Um, uh, you could do asynchronously with say no video and audio only, or lots of ideas in that Google doc that I shared with you, 28 pages of homework on lots of other tools that you could use asynchronously. For example, Quizlet Live, they've just introduced um, a, um, a, a single player option. And there's various things like with GimKit and Kahoot, you can, you can create challenges, which can be done independently. So, you know, there are ways of, of, of conducting yourself without using live lessons. So that's one of the challenges, you know, do you go asynchronous or stick with synchronous? Uh, right. Okay, thank you, Joe. There's one questions usually asked by Indonesian it, because in Indonesia we have limited internet connection can you mm -hmm. give an advice of any tools which doesn't need a uh, high bandwidth yeah so as I mentioned in the presentation I would say podcasts are a really good idea so I'm sure uh, if I know uh, Colm's going to talk later about um, on the uh, British Council website there are resources that um, teachers can access for uh, that are podcasts but there's you know there's lots of authentic podcasts you could access you could download uh, or ask the students to download the podcast and then create, um, let's say, a Google form, which could then have, be self-marked, uh, so a Google quiz. If you go onto YouTube and do, you do a search for um, how to turn a Google form into a Google quiz or just for Google quiz, um, that's very simple to set up. You can, uh, it can be marked automatically. Um, so I would suggest those sorts of ideas where you can download the content beforehand and then do the activity uh, in your own time. So I, I would avoid using sort of video conferencing 
and uh, and downloading videos because of the, the the bandwidth need if you're in a school where or in an environment where you don't have a fast connection but audio podcasts i think are perfect for um a, a low-tech environment okay one more question for you um i recap from some questions so of all the tools that you know what's your favorite one no <laughs> I'm asked that question all the time. You know, it's a very difficult, um, I mean, I know. And it, changes, it changes all the time. At the moment, I'm loving whiteboard.fi because I've only just come across it and I can see how cool it is. Mm -hmm. I really like Clips by Apple um, because it does live titles. So for example, you can talk to the video camera on your, on your device, on your iPad, and it will turn your voice into live subtitles. I think that's very cool. I love things like Padlet for um, publishing multimedia content to an online notice board. I love it for speaking, you can record audio. So you could use what's called a shelf format and have different columns on Padlet. So all, the first column could be the teacher questions and then the other columns could be the uh, one column per student. They then answer the, the questions all just using audio. You can moderate a Padlet as well. So um, the teacher gets to see everything before it goes live. I love Mentimeter, which I've shown you already in this presentation. There's a, just a few things really, I, I love that sort of interactive wow factor of doing things live and things might go wrong as they have done today but as long as you know you keep calm and you just go for it then that's fine and i think this, the students really like that as well when they can and, and when i'm presenting IATEFL, people seem to like the, the the live nature of presenting something live because they know that things might go wrong but they really appreciate when they see you know what great things that, that can be done and the way that they can all interact together and give people the opportunity for promoting student voice and um and, and what have you any other questions or, or are we I yeah, think all good? I should close the Q&A session and thank no you problem. very much everybody giving big applause to you at their houses. Thank you. Thank all you. Right. You're welcome. My thank pleasure. Thank you everyone. Thank you, Joe. And now uh, we are going to uh, move on to the second presenter, our beloved president of ITAL, Pajati. Are you ready? So Prajati is uh, our president, the president of ITEL. He's going to talk about uh, something. I don't know, maybe you can just tell a little bit about you yourself. Probably some of uh, the participants uh, doesn't know you already, and you may start your presentation directly. And over to you, Pajati. OK. Um, can you hear me, Finn? Yeah. Thank you very much. Yes. OK. Thank you very much. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm going to presentation very short one it's a very short one it's more on uh, British Council website and how to build a, a bridge uh, on that website before you use the uh, self-study and before you use the uh, materials there I'm going to go real quick on that and then we can have a discussion basically if you are not an English teacher if you teach on the subject then a lot of websites that's very good, but you have to think carefully to look at the aim of the, or the objective of the learning and then to look at the um, bridge or activity that you can uh, create. So I'll, I'll, I'll do uh, some demo on, on that. Can you see my screen then? Yes, Pajati, we can uh, see your screen. Okay. Um, okay, so this is the, the menu that uh, we're going to have. I'm going to talk about digital world very quickly, and then um, learn English for British Council Org, that's, uh, and then how to create an reaching activity. I'm going to use uh, Mentimeter like uh, Joe. Then uh, I'm going to go to teach English, look at one or two resources and lesson plan and activities and then how to build the bridge. So basically it's, it's that. Um, digital world. Mobile phone, it's a digital world. With the mobile phone, you can go to uh, banking with money. You can um, write a taxi right now using your mobile phone. That's never happened 20 years ago. You can write a Gojek. You can buy things or you can sell things. And um, education. The education always come at the last. I don't know why, yeah? When it's related to technology. Okay, now, when we talk about 
uh, education at the beginning, there are resources for teaching and learning. That's what I'm going to talk uh, about today. And tools for communications. Uh, in this series later, will be uh, taught by Grace and other uh, panelists later within the week in this, in this series. Tomorrow, I'm going to talk about uh, artificial intelligence as a helper in uh, teaching and learning. But today, I'm going to talk more on British Council learning resources. This is the website for self-study, for learning. So it's suitable for self-study material and then we're going to explore some of them. Let me go to the website. Let me share, no, not this one, sorry. Uh, I got problem with the sharing. Just a second. Baby boomers get lost. Um, with this, uh, I should need any help, but <laughs> oh, yeah, but screen. screen sharing. Um, wait a second, you have to share your screen, not only PowerPoint. I know, but then, um, there, this there. no, the button of the zoom is covering, yeah, this one covering at the top, covering the uh, menu for, for that. Okay, now this is the um. Learn English um, website. When you look at that, there are skills. So basically, there are many resources that you can get from here. And the students, they can learn on their own. Look at an example. For example, if I take a pre-intermediate here, then I'm going to do a listening, for example, about transport and announcements. And click that. Then um, you will have uh, the audio there. You have the preparation, what you have to do, a kind of exercise. Yeah. Um, carriage, what is that? For example, uh, you put that. Oh, no. Space, no. Yeah. So this is the exercise for preparation for the students. Then they have the transcript there. They have the task, multiple choice. They have the task too there. And also they can download a worksheet when, uh, with a low tech if there is no internet connection. So as a resource, it's a very good for high tech when they got the connection so the student can work on their own and then they can score themselves. Or if not, you can um, download the worksheet and a PDF. Now, um, the problem with this, sometime when you introduce the um, website, if you're just talking about the vocabulary and then off the students working on their own, probably they will not do it. They are not really interested in uh, listening to a transport announcement. So as a teacher, we have to think about how to build a bridge, how to make the students so that they go to this and do the exercise. I'm going to give you some, some tips on that. Um, let me... Try this one. Okay. I stop sharing just a second. I got problem with the uh, button. Okay, now. Um, uh, 
I'm going to share um, Mentibeter with you. And this is the activity to preach uh, so that the students will So the connection is a lot slower compared to you. No, um, yeah, go to mentimeter.com and the code is 58947. Look at the picture and write down three words that came in your mind. Okay, I'll show the picture again. Okay, and hide there. Okay, as you see, that's uh, the biggest, the center is uh, London. So almost everyone, uh, most of the participants right now, they are uh, writing about London there. Okay, now uh, I should stop there. So this is from vocabulary. Now, next questions. Who are those people? Okay, I stopped there. So mostly uh, tourists, friends, and visitors. I think that's uh, three words that's uh, there. Some are friend, yeah? I move to the next questions. So three interesting places in London. If I give you a thousand pounds, which places are you going to visit? Sorry, should be which places are you going to visit? Should be S there. Okay, so mostly you're going to London Bridge and Big Ben. That's the most popular there. London Bridge, still Big Ben and Museum Buckingham Palace. That's another interesting place. Thank you. I should uh, stop there. So you got the sense, yeah? Uh, let me move on. Okay. Now, um, that's an activity before you ask your students to go into the website, um, to go to a Learn English uh, website here, before they listen to announcement. Right now, when you see, if you bring them with a picture, help of picture, help of uh, vocabulary from them, question, uh, you ask questions and answer from them, then the relation of announcements that you're traveling will become relevant. So that kind of activity that we, we need to bridge Indonesian students into English when they're talking about London because Indonesia and London is just too far. So you need some activities before you assign your student to go to the website. There are a lot of uh, resources here, vocabulary, even up to business English and so on, and skills, listening, reading, and writing when you go to, reading is uh, very similar. For example, if you put a one, and um, there is another reading here, a poster for exam and candidate. 
when you do this, again, you have, before you go to this, you need to think simple activities to bring your students emotionally. Why should I do a poster for exam candidate? It takes like that. So you have to go through that before you use the uh, material so that the material become relevant to your students. Okay, so that's, um, let's move on to the um, next slide. Kayaknya panas banget, jadi aku agak keringetan. And also, uh, I'm a baby boomer, so it uh, look like I'm a little bit cup tech here. <laughs> okay. Um, go online. Going to share another screen. Yeah. Okay. Um, more on teaching English. If you're an uh, English teacher, maybe some of you, or most of you, are already familiar with that. Teaching English uh, org. There are resources, there are activities, there are lesson plans, and many more. I'm going to look at a uh, little on a lesson plan, and now going to use, for example, fake news, the lesson plan and the worksheet. But before I'm using that, then I'm thinking of, again, bridging the activities uh, with my students before I use that lesson plan from the British Council. I'm going to show you the um, web first. Okay, so this is the uh, website. Professional developments there. We have publication, we have teaching resources. Yeah, I go to teaching resources, for example, then teaching secondary. There are activities here. If you click the activities, there are, uh, give you ideas how to create an activities for your class. For example, if you teach beginners, SMP, class 1, class 2, mungkin, there are many activities that you can use. Mostly you can uh, print on that. Yeah. Um, going to secondary. Then I'm going to go to lesson plans. Let's see. Okay, um, going to intermediate B1. Then I'm going to fake news. So I'm going to use this for my next lesson. Jati, yeah. But Jati, we, we cannot see your website. We, uh, what we see is your PowerPoint screen. Oh, oh, okay, 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 okay. Sorry, 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 sorry. Sorry, sorry. Deeper sorry. Deeper sorry, yeah. Pak Tua is a... Uh... <laughs> yeah, you have, should have. Okay, now you see the website. Yes, uh, okay, great. You have professional development here. You have publication, teaching resources. I'm going to do the demo more teaching resources. I've clicked the teaching for secondary. If I go there. Then there are activities. I click activities. There are more. For example, you teach beginner, you click that. Activities for first lesson and so on. So you can explore later on on your own. I'm going to show you uh, how to build a, a bridge on a um, lesson that I'm going to get. For example, I'm going to teach the intermediate P1. Then I'm going to take this one about fake news. So this is a reading activities. The lesson plan you can download there. Uh, but before this, I have to think about again, the bridge, yeah? Now I'm going to take you to my bridge uh, in a second. Hopefully I should stop sharing first, then I go to start sharing screen. The problem is the bottom there. Okay. So back to here. Okay, can you see my screen, Ben? Okay. Yeah. I can see your menti matter. Yeah, okay. So now it's going to do a menti here. Um 
Okay, go to menti.com. Then uh, the code is 44, 32, 53. How long do you spend surfing internet in the internet in a day? Get your uh, mobile. Two hours, four hours, six hours. Ya, yeah. ada yang lebih dari 20, 12 jam. Pasti punya toko online. 26 jam. Ya, yeah, toko online. Oke, okay. so 115, 100 and uh, okay, I keep it there. So most of you, out of uh, 148, spend around six hours, yeah, in a day. Next questions. Where do you get the latest news from? Ya, 406178. Ya, 200-an saya stop ya supaya tidak terlalu panjang. Okay, 192. Okay, now uh, online newspaper very good, but some of you get the latest news from the Instagram. Must be looking for something uh, to buy or something latest uh, news. Okay, mostly um, online newspaper. Some still or oh, six of you in the newspaper. See, so this is another um, way of using Mentimeter, yeah? Now, I'm going to go to the next questions. How do you spot a fake news in the internet or when you are online? Whack. So, when it's a WA group, pasti fake news, gitu ya? Bombastic titles, let's see. So when it's in Instagram, so it's fake. Instagram is quite big. Facebook. Okay, 160. Okay, I, I stop you there. So this is the activity that I, uh, the one that you can use. It's only one using a Mentimeter before you ask the student to work on their own or before you give a lesson based on the British Council uh, website. Yeah, I'm going to stop this sharing and uh, let's uh, continue. Um, how much time do I still have, Finn? Like Five minutes. Ten would be. Then I'll I'll make it two. Okay. So, <laughs> okay. So um, you can explore later on uh, teachingenglish.org.uk. Then um, I'm giving you a quick demo on before I use the uh, lesson plan and worksheet, what I call it bridge, yeah. um, using a Mentimeter. So tomorrow, I'm going to talk uh, about artificial intelligence uh, for one hour tomorrow, mostly for learning uh, in general, start from speaking and writing. Uh, I'm going to talk about that tomorrow. And then uh, 
The next day, that will be the project cerita digital. So if you're interested, you can enroll on that. Jadi saya bagiannya iklan sekarang. Finita is going to give a meaningful, engaging, emergency remote learning and experience. Then we'll have Celia and Grace is going to talk about circulating students' ideas in online learning. Then Kakak Toar is going to talk about unleashing the potential of CMC in language learning. Then we have uh, Lutvia handling meaningful feedback in online learning. Because when I look at some um, of the question is asking on uh, how to give a good feedback online learning. Then we have uh, Daniel a showcase from offline material design to simple online classroom management for the teachers. So that's uh, relevant for the situation right now that you have to teach uh, from home. So this is the series, the first series, and we if we are running very good, and we'll we have to find a way to have the uh, second series, the series two. Thank you very much. That's from me, and uh, see you tomorrow at uh, six, and when we talk about artificial intelligence. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. President, Opa, Pak Tua, <laughs> everyone's talking about Pak Tua on the chat, uh, <laughs> giving you support while you are nanak nunuk with the... Yeah, yeah <laughs> getting, getting old right now. <laughs> no, no, you are still our master. Anyway, yeah. Pak, uh, there are some questions. Are you happy to select your own or do you want me to pick uh, for you? For me, then uh, I'll try to pretend to answer it. Okay. Um, 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 um. So some of, uh, let me see. The questions, uh, this is from Pak Ignatius. I'm interested with Pak Jati said in terms of digital word. I think it's because, oh, it's not a question, it's a comment. Sorry. Um, nah, if I share great, great web of learning to my students, they just skip it, but not exploring it with traditional reason, not enough data to open it. Do you have any suggestion? Not, not enough data. Yeah, yeah. No internet connection, gak ada, gak ada data. I cannot is, hear you, Pak. Halo, halo. Uh, tidak ada yeah, kuota. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, so and then when there is no quota, you have to think of a low tech like podcast or flash disk that they can take home and things like that. No other ways. Kaya e gitu. Kalau memang tidak ada data dan itu banyak yang bisa dilakukan dengan podcast gurunya yang harus punya koneksi to the internet, then download it and then distribute it to the student using flash disk or using other means. There is no other way if there is no signal in the area. Okay, thank you. Next question. Uh, Pak Jati, some of the classes cannot be done synchronously. Can you give suggestion how to bridge an asynchronously? What should we keep in mind when we want to bridge the student to the materials asynchronously? Asynchronously is going to be very hard because you need a feedback, that's, that's the importance of bridge. So the bridge, uh, unsynchronously, you can use uh, WA group, possibly, tapi agak susah. Yeah. Um, WA group, that will be delayed. Uh, or you, if you have a telegram, that will be delayed conversation. But maybe if that's in a remote area, maybe that's still okay. But the, to build the bridge, the most important is to engage the student emotionally with your material so that you can respond very quick. Itu, itu kuncinya. But if you cannot have that, then you can have a, with a group or other, other means. Kaya gitu, kaya gitu. Kaya gitu. And there are, there are many questions asking the same thing. Is there any webs or uh, application that can be used for bridging the materials other than Mentimeter? Um, there are a lot. Uh, I'm going to talk, maybe not me, but Chris will, I don't know. Oh, similar to Mentimeter, it's like Padlet, Joe already mentioned that. Um, 
uh, what else? Uh, interactive board, whiteboard, that will be a good to create the uh, to build the emotion between the teacher and the students because it's not just giving the vocabulary, giving the experience so that oh yeah, I dream to go to London. Da, 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 da. So now I'm willing to listen to the announcement, something like that. Kaya okay. Itu, kaya itu. Kayak gitu ya Pak, cukup ya Pak ya, besokan Siap. lagi. Untuk para fans cukup ya, besok lagi sama Pak Jati. Oke, okay. thank you Pak Jati for the nice presentation. Uh, everyone, give applause at home. <laughs> All right then. Now we are moving on to our last presenter. There will be two, uh, Kom and Christiana. Kom, are you ready? Hi, yeah, I'm ready. Yeah, okay, so uh, without further ado, I will hand, it, hand the microphone to you, Kom. The microphone is yours. Okay, thank you very much, Vanita. And well, we still have 651 teachers and educators in Indonesia and around the world. So thank you very much for staying with us. Uh, it's a long session today. Uh, so maybe it's time for us all to have a stretch you know you can have a stretch you know sometimes we spend a lot of time every day looking at the screen it's good to have a break um so i'm gonna have a stretch you can all have a stretch at home um thanks so much to joe and to pak jati for those sessions we've recorded this webinar by the way so we will be uploading it and we will be sharing both joe's and pak jati's slides so We've got about seven minutes. I haven't got very long. Um, I'm going to share some British Council resources with you uh, in the remaining time. So stay with me. I know we've been here for a long time, but stay with me and I'll see if I can share my screen with you all now. So I'm going to share my slides. Uh, so hopefully you can now see my slides. Finita, can you confirm that? Yes. Yeah. All right. So let's go through this relatively quickly. Again, you will be able, you'll get a copy of these slides and you will all be able to explore these resources in your own time uh, afterwards. There's about six slides that I'm going to go through. First of all, uh, I want to explain what the, the purpose of the slide deck is. Okay. So during this time where everybody is at home, and teachers are having to teach from home, we think it's more important than ever to support English teachers. And so to help you, we have gathered together as an organization our, our resources and we, for you as English teachers. And feel free to share those resources with your networks, uh, with other teachers who are not perhaps in this webinar. And the aim of this is to help you, know, help you to deliver effective online teaching if you have now moved online and to support other teachers um, that you work with. We're especially keen, as I said at the beginning, to foster collaborations, uh, communities of practice. So you, again, you have your community in your school. We have our ITEL community. Uh, we have our British Council community. As well as, I mean, today we looked at websites like the Learn English and Teach English website and a few digital applications. Um, also, especially in countries where bandwidth is uh, maybe not fast and internet connection is, is not so great, we need to look at low tech um, resources such as using television and radio content. I think Padjati briefly mentioned even just sending an email or WhatsApp is a very good way of keeping in touch with your students and is it requires less uh, of an internet connection. But underneath all of this and underneath the use of technology, we really, really want to uh, emphasize the importance of you know, good teaching practice or pedagogy. Okay, so your use of technology Um, the you know the success of that really depends on your skills as a good English teacher in the classroom okay it's not the technology that's going to make your lessons great it's you as a teacher and how you use these tools 
So good teaching practice, um, you know, is at the core of everything. You know? Technology is just a tool for you to communicate and continue teaching online with your students. All right. So let, uh, please remember that uh, in everything that you do. So you still need to work on a lesson plan and think through your lesson aims uh, very carefully with, with every lesson. So let me go through some of these slides. The first one is uh, it's called Online Resources for Teachers. So I'm not gonna click every link here today, but you can, these are all hyperlinks. So if you're interested in doing more research, we have a range of uh, free public um, publications around English language teaching, including the utilization of digital technology. So you could click here. Um, we're right now, we're in a webinar with Joe and with Jati and the ITEL team. The British Council has a number of webinars of our own, uh, global webinars. So this is just really for Indonesia. I mean, if I click this, let's see the page open. Uh, I hope you can see this. So for example, there are a series of online webinars, oh, so webinars, and most of the webinars at the moment are aimed at online teaching. So you've missed a couple. There was one on teaching online. Oh, so people can see, can see only your uh, PPT, so you have to stop sharing and then show the, the browser with oh. the new. Sorry, I was just sharing my. No worries. Slide. I'm going to share my desktop instead. Thanks very much. Yeah. Can you see no that problem. now? Yeah. All right, thanks very much. This is my desktop. So yeah, this is in the, the webinars. So if I click that link on my slide, you can see our forthcoming webinars and the past ones. So you've missed three. Uh, this is about supporting and mentoring teachers remotely, tech tools and the tutor's role. These were in March and the beginning of April. Uh, but there will be more and more coming up. So this one is you know, the 17th of April, uh, the 20th of April. So these are British Council webinars. So just going back to my slides, there is a... Sorry, there is a booklet uh, for teachers about integrating technology into their teaching, which you can have a read through. And there's a specific link here for our Teach English Radio. Again, a series of podcasts to help develop skills as a teacher. I'll go into the next page. This page is titled really Teaching for Success. And this is a link or a page really about what I would call not just webinars, but online courses. Um, so a whole course that you might do over a month, for example, you can do this online as a teacher. Uh, so we partner with a platform called Future Learn to deliver these courses. They are free. So for example, let's just click on this link, see what comes up. So this link is called Teaching for Success Le learning and learners uh, it says again you can join the course for free it takes about four weeks so two hours of study as a teacher every week it's a free course and you can see that it's available now and you can join it today um, so you can explore these links these are not just a standalone webinar but an actual course over about a month yeah four weeks in duration so there are a range of different courses. There's another one here called The Classroom and the World, which is talking about or focused on 20, integrating 21st century skills, tech and teaching, uh, multilingualism um, you know, around the world. So there are a, a range of different free courses that you could sign up to. Uh, this uh, page is by our partner schools global network. Uh, so we work with a lot of primary and secondary schools around the world. And these are resources that are specifically focused in response to COVID-19. We've developed a number of um, free resources for schools, parents and learners. These, these include tips for children uh, that are using the internet to make them stay safe online. You know, child protection is a, something that is very important to us at the British Council that um, young people are safe when they use the internet and that they don't uh, make friends or give access to people they don't know. 
Um, so this is a really good advice. This is specifically aimed at kids. So teenagers themselves could, could use this resource. Then there are some tips for parents and for schools. Again, about developing a safe, effective uh, policy for using technology uh, for education. So have a look at those. And then what was great is that Pat Jati demonstrated the use of some of our British Council resources. So we have different resources for uh, adults, for teenagers and for kids. So I know that some of you who registered are teaching very young learners. Um, so I just want to have a look at our, you know, we have a website called Learn English Kids, which you can have a go to. Um, let's have a look. Maybe there's a listen and watch. So these, this is our, what we call Learn English Kids site. So there are lots of um, activities and resources for very young learners here. I think if I go back, how to wash your hands in English. Uh, at the moment, we're all needing to wash our hands all the time to stay safe. So you could play this video to your kids and then through this, they can learn some English vocabulary. More memorable for little hands. So wet those hands and apply some soap. It's time for my big song. Rub the palms, one, two. Rub the knuckles, one, two. Rub the insides of your feet. All right, so you get the idea. So there's a video with music, and then there are games as a teacher or as a parent you can play. Uh, you can print the words. You know, so there are lots of things that we can, you know, you can do with kids. Just going back to my this slide, it says actually uh, COVID-19 support for parents. So I'm going to click on that bit. The British Council. Oh, sorry. I need to go back. This one, right. So on the Learn English Kids website, the British Council has developed a specific page for parents at the moment, because a lot of children are no longer in school, they're at home. So this is really advice for, you know, what the role of, you know, what parents can do to help support their children with their English or with their lessons at the moment. So there's lots of tips here that you can read through. And then just at the end, I just want to highlight this. Um, there is a also, as well as the British Council websites, we have a lot of Facebook groups. So you can join the British Council teaching community. There's even now a Learn English Parents Facebook page. Uh, you know, we can have a look at that. So this should open the, this is the, the parents site for young learners. And at the top here, you can see there's an advertisement for Learning Time with Timmy, another free online course, English in Early Childhood Language Learning and Development. Again, if I just click on the banner, uh, it's gonna show me a link to, the again, the Future Learn platform. So this is another course for teachers and parents maybe discover how very young, learn, very young children learn English as an additional language and how you can help them to progress. And again, this is available now. You can join it today. It's a free course. Um, you can join it for free. This is gonna take about six weeks, but only two hours a week. I'm sure we all have two hours a week at the moment whilst we're at home. So again, I mean, I haven't been able to go through all of these resources, as well as Learn English Teen uh, Kids. We have a Learn English Teen site. There's specific links specifically for teenagers. Uh, obviously, the teen, we know teenagers have got very different interests than uh, young children. So it's a different website with different topics and different types of uh, uh, activities for, that will be appropriate for your teenagers. Um, and that, that really is what I wanted to cover. There's a lot for you to explore. Really, this is introducing a resource that I hope you will uh, download and have a look at later on. So here it is. Oh, that's my whole presentation. So we'll be sending you a link to this later. Um, this is the QR code for my presentation and all of those pages and hyperlinks. So I'll just leave that there for a minute. 
And um, again, we'll send you a, a copy of this in an email after the webinar. So you can take a photo, you can scan the QR code. I just want to go back for one minute because there's one other thing that I'm going to ask you to do is that the British Council globally, whilst uh, many teachers, English teachers around the world are in the same, in the same situation that we are now unable to go to school in, in many countries, we're having to teach online. We want to better understand the needs that you have um, so that we can provide webinars and resources that are going to help you in this new situation. And so for that purpose, this is a different QR code. Uh, this is a survey. It's about 10 questions. It's the same survey for every country in the world that we're running. Um, so, you know, we're getting this. I'm very keen as the director for English in Indonesia to, to get a response from English teachers here in Indonesia so that we together with ITEL can help uh, develop resources, uh, webinars and sessions that suit your needs. So please, if you have time, you know, scan this QR code and uh, do, this, do this survey for us. And uh, I'm aware that we've gone over time. Uh, so you're still with us, I hope. Uh, we've got 590 at the moment. I just wanted to really thank Joe and thank Pagjati uh, ever so much for their time today, um, you know, for their expertise in sharing how, the, you know, you know, the, you know, you can see how technology can be used in such an interactive and, and exciting way with your students. We recognize that not everybody will have a fast internet connection or a laptop, um, but we're getting there and these things are getting better. And uh, so maybe this is the future in one sense of what English language teaching is going to look like. Um, I don't think technology is ever going to replace teachers, um, but teachers who use technology are probably going to have a better chance of keeping their jobs in the future than teachers who don't use technology at all. But pedagogy comes first, always. Um, how are we doing for, well, Finita, I wanted to, Yeah. can I give, Christiana, five minutes, because Christiana is going to tell us about tips for parents. Yeah, I think we can go on. Probably some of us will be leaving because it's already Maghrib time, but I mentioned that uh, probably we can finish in like uh, 10 minutes uh, right. maximum. So okay. we can have Christiana, Christiana for five minutes. And then would you like to take some, uh, uh, would you like to answer some questions or? People can keep writing questions but right now i know people some people might have to go and i know it will be prayer time for some people this whole recording uh, is dead, but i think while we have christina with us i just for five minutes i'm gonna let christina uh because i saw a video that christina put online from romania and i wanted to mm -hmm. share her experience with all of you because christina is not only a teacher she's a mum, and uh, <laughs> a 10 year old son learning from home so without further ado I'm going to finish here, uh, stop sharing, and I'm going to hand over to Christina to give some tips just for parents. Thank you very much, Cole. So I've been a teacher educator for the British Council online courses for 10 years, and I've worked with thousands of teachers all around the world. But as Cole said, I'm also a parent. And I realized that while we have tried to offer a lot of support uh, to teachers, there has been very little support for parents. And actually, we imagine as teachers that when we send all these materials and activities to the learners, they actually deal with them on their own, which is absolutely not true. We have to be realistic. Parents' help is necessary. So I made three videos. I put them in the chat uh, for you. Um, and you can find them also on, on YouTube for online schooling. Very briefly, I want to show you some tips for uh, asynchronous platforms from what I heard today, this is what you mainly use um, in your country. So um, what, the, what the, uh, my tips for parents are from the perspective of a parent and a teacher educator is first of all, to help the learners get organized. Quite often we think that children and teenagers are very good with technology, 
Well, no, they aren't. They are good with playing games quite often. Some of them are, but not all. And they do need our help organizing all the materials they receive from school. So uh, if, the, if we have them create uh, a school folder and then create separate folders for each subject matter, and then rename the materials they receive, including the subject, and the dates. My son finds it logical to include the date uh, when he received the materials. I find it logical to include the date when uh, he is supposed to, to hand in the, the uh, homework, but I let him organize his materials as he wants. I just gave him a hand. Then uh, we should also try as parents to give our children autonomy. Uh, because yes, we have to help them, but we have, don't have to do things for them. So, for instance, in our case, I created a personal email account for my son, but I connected it uh, to my email so that I have complete control what goes in there. As Joe was saying earlier, it's very important to keep children safe online. Uh, we can show them different online tools like the ones we had today. Uh, and uh, always, always remember that the materials are sent for the children to practice, not for the parents. Then... Um, they receive quite a lot of materials, as we said, uh, on asynchronous platforms, and they have to work on them. Quite often, they look at the screen, they write in a notebook, they look at the screen again, or they just copy everything in a notebook if you don't have a printer, which is our case as well. So I found it very useful to teach my son to work in paint or any other similar, um, in any other similar um, tool, online tool, in which they, electronic tool actually, uh, and they can write directly on the materials. If it's a PDF, you can take a screenshot and then they write on the PDF, on the image actually, you save it and you send it to the teacher instead of having them copying everything because you can't print the material. So this is a very simple practical thing that we are doing and it has worked very, very well for us. Um, I think even if we are not in school, it's very important to create a timetable for our children. Now you have some freedom because um, the, the school doesn't dictate what time the children have to work, but it, you as a parent should try to create uh, some regularity, some, some rhythm in, in studying. So if your child works very well in the afternoon, then have an afternoon schedule, it's perfectly all right. Just make sure that you have that a rhythm going on every day at the same time they should know they have to do something to do some online studying and of course include some breaks that stretching that Kwon showed us is very useful for learners as well uh, my son studies on a synchronous uh, platform uh, with some asynchronous materials as well and I make sure that in between classes he stands up we sometimes do a silly dance around the house whatever it takes to make him move and stand up and uh, just turn away from, from the screen. And um, finally, I think although it's easier uh, in some uh, context to use the asynchronous platforms, from time to time it is good to have a synchronous meeting. And if uh, the school cannot afford that, many of you here seem very, uh, very savvy uh, in terms of uh, technical uh, matters. So you could actually suggest that you host a meeting. It's very good for the children to see each other, to see the teachers at least once a week, even if they don't have the opportunity to have regular online classes, just making sure that they stay in touch, that they feel that they were not forgotten by the school, they were not forgotten by the, by the classmates and the teachers is very important. Because after all, what we all want is to give the children that uh, feeling of comfort, that they are not living in a completely different world. It's still the same world, we just have to make some adjustments. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, that was great. Um, really, and I think maybe this is just the first of our webinars. Uh, we will have many more, um, including this series from ITEL over the next 10 days. And I'm sure, Christiana, you will be very happy to come back. Uh, maybe Absolutely, anytime. <laughs> a longer session in the next couple of weeks. Um, so really, just the last words for me is to thank everybody. I just wanted to highlight what I've been reading the chat also, and uh, there was a particular person called uh, Earl, Elnya Abi Dasari, and she said that she had put on makeup today because she thought she was <laughs> popping up in our meeting. I did too. <laughs> I'm really sorry, Elnya Abi Dasari. Next time, we will invite you. 
and we will have more engagement from all to all uh, to come and share your experiences too and to come and talk um, as well so this is our first experience as a webinar but next time we'll have meetings and webinars and we'll, we will engage uh, and let everybody have an opportunity to share so i'm going to just say thanks and hand back to Fanita to to wrap up today's webinar okay thank you calm and christiana and thank you everybody for staying with us almost two hours webinar and then just a couple of information before we finish uh first tomorrow not today um tomorrow you are going to get an email from us uh the content will be about the survey and then the form um where you are going to get your certificate. So you will have to fill out the form to get your certificate. And after that, uh, the materials, the PowerPoint will be in your email too. And this video is record, being recorded. So wait a minute, can, you, can everybody hear me? Sorry. Yes. Okay, yes. okay. Because I saw that uh, calm is freezing. All right, let me repeat. Tomorrow you will get an email. The content is the survey from uh, British Council. And then you will get the form that you need to fill out for your certificate. So from each webinar, you will get one certificate. If you join, you join eight webinars, you will get eight certificates. And also the PowerPoint, everybody's asking about the PowerPoint. Uh, it will be sent, the link will be sent to your email too. And the video, this uh, webinar is recorded. We are going to inform when uh, this video is uploaded on YouTube. And I heard that Joe will also upload in your channel. Yep. So I think that's all for today. Thank you very much. See you tomorrow. The session will pajati about uh, artificial intelligence. Thank you and goodbye. Bye. Bye everyone. Good job, Cristiana. Bye. Thank you, Joe. Cristiana, thank you. Bye. Thank you very My much. Bye. Bye. It's been amazing. Yeah, bye bye. Bye bye.